I'm in a few groups on Facebook and just like other communities in the WordPress and web development and hosting space and all that. And I've seen some posts from other developers, agency owners uh, surrounding this topic. And then I've seen comments in response to the like the original question of should I let or, or what is your process for letting clients edit their own websites, specifically WordPress, but could be adapted to any uh, any platform really, but I have some thoughts. There's a way that we do it. Uh, my name is Mark Joe Szymanski. I'm the owner and founder of Find a Tech Digital Agency. We build WordPress websites, and I like to share the things that I go through and the topics that I think about. I like to share that with other developers and agency owners. So, uh, welcome to the channel. What we're going to talk about, like I said, is this concept. I've seen it in a couple groups. I have some thoughts on it. Let's chat about it. So, there's what I'm seeing is some of the videos and things that have been recommended in comments, there's not enough nuance that has gone into it. Uh, I'll start off by saying that you as a web developer should be the authority. You shouldn't be being, you, you, if you, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but in my opinion, I don't want to be taking orders from my clients. I want to be the person that they are contracting to build a beautiful website that functions great and takes a lot of the thing like you're the expert you you should know UI UX you or your team or whatever right but like your company or you individually are the expert you're the authority you need to position yourself like that that's a whole deeper topic but like it's the basis of this right so when we think about somebody hiring us to build a website kind of have some notes here let's walk through it somebody hires you to build a website so the first thing that you need to think of, and again, a lot of this is gonna be abstract and the content following all of the videos, if you subscribe and everything, it's gonna kind of pull apart a lot of these things because this is like, you know, again, like high level and we'll dig into how to kind of do some of this thing. I'll show you some things in this video. I'll try to make this as short as possible because I tend to ramble on these topics because they are deep, but I'm gonna try to keep it as high level as possible. Somebody hires you to build a website. The first thing that you should do or the thing that you should implement into your workflow, the stack, the way that you work is, and I'm telling you this is gonna be beneficial for you because it's happened to us. If you make your websites as dynamic as possible, you will be so far ahead of honestly 80% of like the developers, we'll just talk about specifically that I see in the WordPress space. What do I mean though by dynamic? What I mean specifically by dynamic, and other people might call it different, describe it differently, but the reason I use that word is just example for us is we use Elementor and we use Jet Engine. Those are like, with those two tools, you can build pretty much anything. Again, different topic. But if you know what Elementor is, or, you, or you're familiar with any builder, a lot of the builders now, even like Gutenberg, I think, like the built-in type thing, is gives you the opportunity to add dynamic content. Meaning, instead of a header on like a post or something, you can pull in this, like for instance, the post title. So it shows up in the, you can set up a blog template. And if, if, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you, you should, I, I would I would think I, I think you should look into like building templates and things like that using these builders. But basically, to super simplify, you don't have to be copying and pasting a bunch of different pages or, or or ways of like doing things or little widgets and everything like that. You can set it up once and then you can like dynamically pull the data in. And if you're not doing that, it's extremely unscalable. So that's kind of a separate issue. But if you build if you build like that in mind, like a programmer, like somebody that is like setting up a structure or a layout and then saying like this piece of content should get pulled from the site title this piece should get pulled from this field this piece should get pulled from the featured image whatever it is if you build like that with every piece of the website that you can if it lends itself to it then do it you're gonna be way better off not just building websites and editing them shelf but also what we're talking about here with clients editing sites so keep that in mind if you don't build like that i totally understand what you're saying and you're kind of confused and bamboozled as as to how you can or cannot let a client edit. So you're building a new website, make sure that that is top of mind, look into that if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you do, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's keep moving on. So you do this for the web, for the, for the client, they get a new website. So what do we give them? Like what's our process, just as an example? We give them a new website and then do we just give them the keys and do we just give them the keys and leave? No, we wanna build a relationship with every single person. However, Sometimes it is difficult to sell that support or maintenance thing. So we do a couple extra things included in every development package or build package. We give them a website owner's manual, which is from Kyle over at the admin bar, great product. Um, we have, kind of have our own take on it and we've, we've taken a lot from that. 
But within that owner's manual, think of it as like buying a new car. You're probably gonna still have a relationship with that dealership. You might take it back there for service and everything like that, but you wanna know how the thing operates and you wanna know like the ins and outs of it. So you give them that website owner's manual. I would recommend put as much information in there as humanly possible. Like definitely how their whole stack is set up, what plugins you use to build that website. If there's any plugins that cost money, like specific to their site that they are gonna have to pay for, write that down, give them the information for all that. I'll share that when we, you know, kind of uh, template the, the thing that we have kind of going on for that. So there'll be more information on that. But just as a concept, don't withhold the information. Give it to them because they're gonna be appreciative. And the other thing is the reason that that, that product was created was to almost overwhelm clients into thinking that like, yes, there's a lot to do. Us as web developers, we do it all the time, so it's not super overwhelming to us. But if they were doing it, it's not it's it's not false. That is overwhelming. They, there's too many things. Things will go wrong. They're not the expert. We're the expert. So it's a play on that. You definitely need something like that to educate them on that. The, the uh, other piece of that is training them on the website, which we'll kind of move into here as we get into support, because do you want to train them? Do you not want to train them? I have a particular thought process on this, and and I'm just I'll, I'll say it now. If you make the website as dynamic as possible, meaning that the WordPress dashboard is as functional as humanly possible to the front end, which I'll show you an example here in a second. If you make it as, as dynamic and as functional as possible, then you can train them very, very easily because we're not giving them access. Do not, don't, don't, don't give them access to Elementor or Beaver Builder or Divi or whatever. Don't do that. Give them access to things on the back end that affect the front end in a very thoughtful way that they really almost can't break anything. The only thing they could do is like put in like typos in the in the content. I cannot tell you how many times I've been asked to do something and I think, well, I could like copy and paste something in there and then I could be asked again in a month or a year or I can make this as dynamic as possible and you know, relationship wise and like dynamic visibility wise, create something where if the content is in there, if they put the content in there, then it shows up. That's a that's a super simple uh, you know condition, but I mean, if you make it dynamic and you think like that, you could build anything, and your clients really like cannot screw it up. So I'll, I'll again, I'll show you exactly what I mean. But so that's the concept there, and then support. So every website, no matter what platform you're on, it does not matter. Like if you're on Squarespace or Wix or Shopify, websites are not a one and done investment. Some people pitch it like that. They're not. There is recurring cost to every single website. In our industry, specifically with WordPress, there is a little bit of extra maintenance that goes into it. Unless you're using WordPress.com or whatever, or however you know these other things work. Like, if you're using WordPress.org, you're doing it on your own hosting and everything like that. There is obviously cost. Make sure, obviously, you are covering your costs with your support thing. We'll make more content specifically on the support. But I pitch the support with the development. I almost don't let people buy development packages without the support because I know that it's not in their best interest. I know that. Like and and they end up understanding that as we move through that process. So do your absolute best to to set the expectation. You are gonna pay one fee to build this and then you're gonna pay a monthly fee to keep it running, keep it secure, keep it fast, whatever you put in there. Again, I have more thought more thoughts on that. But the main one, the main, main, main one, and I hold this belief because I don't actually understand how you don't do this how you do the opposite of this. I do not let my clients, or I, I'm, I'm sorry, we absolutely do not manage the content for our clients. Let me explain what I mean by, my, by content, and it should be broken down even further into stat, more like static and dynamic content. What I mean by content is we build a website, let's just say it has five pages, super simple example, five, five pages, it has a blog, and let's say it has a shop, like a WooCommerce shop, because this is the, this is the best example for this. I am not adding or editing new blogs and I am not adding or editing products. I'm not doing it. And the reason is because it doesn't make any sense. I am not in their business. I am the expert on the website side. If they want to change a product price, okay? And they don't and they it, like that is a core business function that needs to happen presumably right away or they want to set a sale or something like that. They need to do that right away. The, I'll, I'll give you an even one one step further. Think about it from a, a deeper shop perspective because I actually have this user management. 
That is like a whole thing into it of itself. We could get deeper into it. But I am not, when there is like, let's say there's a subscription model. I am, and, and then a, a subscription fails. So you have a subscription model. I'm a little all over the place here with this, but, but understand what I'm trying to say here. You have a website that has subscription via WooCommerce subscriptions or something. So that business that you that is your client is charging people monthly, let's say $200 a month or something like that, to have access to the website or you know some sort of product or something like that. What happens when the credit card of of your tertiary client, like the the client of your client, gets declined? Are you do you want to field that request? Does that sound like that's a good use of your time? One, does that sound like like that makes sense for us as web developers? And let me stop here and say that I'm not telling you how to run your business. I'm just saying that's a completely different service than building and supporting a website. That's completely different. That is like you're you're managing like some sort of fulfillment or like. A, a platform for somebody that is not building a website. They could hire you for that. I, you know, if you want to explore that service offering, I, I, you know, encourage you to do that. But don't lump it in with the technical integrity support of the website. That is way too far deep into that mess. Okay, so that is why to bring this back, training your clients is important, and training your clients is the way to go on the content the dynamic content specifically. Do not let them edit the pages, like edit the actual page structure and layout and everything. Don't do that, that's your job. But if you create the layout and it's like plopping in pieces and like you add a new blog in the back end and then it shows up on the blog page, yes, let them do that. It's a freaking form. I mean, it, I'll show you, I, like it's, they're just, they're, they're um, custom post types and then there's fields in the post types and they just fill out a form with information and they press edit and they press publish. Like it's not, it, that's not rocket science and they, it's very difficult to screw something up. Again, the worst thing that they could do is have, a, is have a blog post go live too soon or a product go live too soon or something. And again, you should, you should those, are, those are corner cases, you should think about those as well. But it's way better than you having to field every request to like change a product picture or something like that. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense and it's not scalable. And again, I have maybe have a different client type that I'm after than you do, but think about all these things, okay? Again, I don't ever wanna like tell anybody what to do. Think about these things and then, and then like take your business vision and, and mold them into, you know, all together like that. Um, yeah, and so, like I said, I'll switch over here so I can give you an idea. This is a, is a quick test that I did, okay? Because I admittedly don't have a perfect, what I think the perfect way to do this is to set up a great backend that you can reuse and set up a user role that is specific to your stack and only shows the things that you want. What I did for this test case is I created a random user on my website and I and I made it an author. So there's administrator, editor, author, subscriber, stuff, whatever. Editor still gives a little bit too much. Author actually gives a little too little, in my opinion. So I think you want a middle ground. You could do that with user role creator, or whatever that plugin's called, user role editor, okay? I will do that, I'll make a further video on it. But here's, I'm just giving you the high level. I know we probably talked a little bit too much, the video is getting too long, but, but I hope this has been helpful. Here's what I mean though, because for some people that might not understand exactly what I'm saying. This dashboard looks way different as an admin. There are way more things here on the left-hand side, okay? Admittedly, there's still too, there's still kind of too many and you, you should, you should, you should, uh, you know, um, critique it down a little bit and you know and play with it a little bit but my point is that there's there's way more things on the admin dashboard the super admin dashboard that I have right this would be like the clients view or very close to it where they can click into posts they can add a new one they can edit one they can do whatever right this right here you're probably wondering what all these are if you've never seen like jet engine these are all custom post types the reason they're all custom post types is one I'm crazy but two is because I love that dynamic nature because it gives me so many more options. And again, you'll see that in the content in the future. But you don't need to have 12 or whatever I have there. You might have like team members and you know services and FAQs or something like that. Do not, don't do it to yourself. Don't let, don't make your client reach out to you when they want to add an FAQ. It's, I mean, it is, it is extremely straightforward. It's extremely straightforward. That's the actual page, which isn't which isn't set up properly here, but it's extremely straightforward. Set it up like this, where they add a title, which would just be like you know the the question or whatever, and they type in the answer, and maybe they give it a category, and they publish it. That's it. 
Like do that. If you want to provide additional services and additional like help in that regard, then you could do that. But if their content is changing all the time, there's no way that you're actually going to be, it is going to be so much less efficient if they have to run everything through you, if they're a self-sufficient client and a good business. So I'm going to end it there. This video got longer than I wanted to. But my point is that don't let your, like, let your clients manage the content. Don't let them manage the, stru manage the structure of the layout or anything. But I really feel like you got to let them manage this stuff. The products especially, like that's like even more like important and, and, and tighter for their business. And they're going to know a lot more about that than you. I'm not saying this is the absolute right way, but this is the way that we do it. And honestly, if you set the expectation and train them with just like the same processes that you do on everything, this is extremely intuitive. I know WordPress isn't always the most intuitive. This is not hard. They're, it, they are filling out a form and then they're gonna press publish and then they're gonna go to the page and they're gonna be like, wow, that was so easy. They're not moving things around. They're not like copying and pasting anything. They're filling in stuff just like they would anywhere else that it's all, and you can give like more details too, like like this is the answer, it will populate whatever, like, and they press the publish button. That's it, it's that simple. And most of the time, last point, is they're probably not gonna, depending on what it is, most of the time it's probably gonna be adding and not even really editing, depending on what the content is. Like if you add an FAQ or a team member, maybe you have to delete a team member occasionally, but if you add like, you know, any of these other things, it's probably a lot of adding not really too much deleting and very little editing. Like how many times you edit a blog post? I mean, depends, certainly, but you know what I mean? So that's my point is make it easy for them. Train them on this. And it's not that hard to do that once you understand how to build like this and then you and then you just set the process up for yourself and then you can just, you could honestly do it standardized video content or something or steps. But I'm telling you, this is working for us. Video got long, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and look out for more content about how to actually do some of these things because this channel is going to be about building your agency from a technical and business perspective, specifically in this WordPress environment that we're all trying to navigate. So thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate you tuning in. I'll talk to you in the next one.